Hey guys! Ready for streaming? Doing some knowledge and being better painters? Let's maybe turn this off. Hey, hey, hey guys! Um, so, yes, today we are doing very wise. Uh, okay, ad starts in three minutes. So, I will talk for a while, then we will have the ad for three minutes, and then uh, we will start doing the knowledge, right? Uh, hey, Henry! Hey, hey! Hey, hey Jim, hey everyone, hello, nice to see you here. Um, we will be talking about backgrounds today, right? And uh, as you can see right now, my background is one big mess <laughs> because I tried to dig out the one of my miniatures I got from uh, Daniel Fernandez. See, this is my miniature, miniature mess and you can like, this is only like a part of the big pile of miniatures <laughs> I'm having over there right now. I'm just trying to find <coughs> the the bus from um, hex figures. Um, okay, why did I turn it off? Uh, from hex figures, I linked it yesterday, but I will link it again today, uh, just to promote Daniel and his company a little bit more. Uh, so I was trying to g dig out the vampire bus I had, and I I need to uh, like uh, go through hex. I need to go through all of the stuff over there and my plan is to actually do a nice uh, tidying up today after the stream and uh, to find the miniature and maybe paint it a little bit and post something here we go guys uh, yeah also sorry for the stream immersion <laughs> I usually build my models it helps me feel less guilty having them unpainted uh, that way it can still be art of it uh, on its own, uh, it's a little sculpture even if I haven't painted it also, it helps me think uh, of ideas when I see the model. I do that. I have a little display cabinet over here <laughs> on my desk and then I have a bigger display cabinet uh, in my uh, living room. Uh, and also I need to get another cabinet uh, for the living room, so I need more. <laughs> but the issue is right now that I have too many kids anyway and I display only the... Uh, like, I don't display all of the ones I really like, but uh, like at least some number of them. And the rest is uh, kept in the boxes because I need the, the another display cabinet basically. Uh, I have two glass ca cases, one with finished models, one with assembled. Yeah, I have the one with unfinished models over here, or with the models that need some tinkering. And uh, in the living room I, I have one with some finished, some unfinished, but I need like a separate display cabinet for my <laughs> Pyramid Abilis collection, right? Because I have so much. And uh, I need the another, like one the display cabinet for my Spira, and then one display cabinet for the painted models. Like Spira and some of the, mo the the figures I actually enjoy because I have uh, some of them are hidden in a uh, in a wardrobe um, in living rooms so, so they are basically invisible anyway so I need to get another display cabinet to put it <laughs> next to the already existing display cabinet and like display everything I like the most and then take some of the models from over here and put them over there um, yeah so. Um, I practice the displaying of the kids because I actually think that they are like little uh, pieces of art. Um, you know, it's a sculpture, right? So it's it's usually usually very well done stuff like that. Even without painting, painting it has its merit, so it's totally okay to display it. Um, yeah, and I really props this idea as well. Um, so yeah, Sebastian is doing it, I'm doing it, you can do it as well, display your miniatures. Um, so yeah, uh, I just, I, I lost my tracking of time basically, uh, what, what I was talking exactly, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, sorry guys, uh, yeah, the uh, ad break, break started, so uh, I will bump, like, talk. Uh, let's call it like uh, relatively reasonable for like the next three minutes and we will start talking about the backgrounds. Um, uh, it's harder for us cut owners, we can just have open sh shelving. Yeah, Kallax kind of helps because there are some of the shelves that the cat cannot access actually. 
Uh, so that's that's okay, but uh, sometimes they like to jump randomly on the stuff that they decided not to jump before, and I thought that it's safe. So actually, having those closed uh, closed display cabinets is very very helpful. Mm, yeah. I just need more cabinets. When I was at Copenhagen at uh, like in Copenhagen at Kromanaut, they had like this very cool IKEA uh, cabinets that are hanging on the wall. They they don't have their own like legs. You have to hang them on the wall, but they are very uh, they are not very deep. They are shallow and they have this very nice, very very broad uh, framing that actually goes outside of the you know frame of the outside of the width of the display cabinet and I, I was thinking that I could just buy uh, some you know nice uh, nice uh, framing panels and I could get this kind of uh, cabinet and create like the framing like it was a, a painting you know like the small uh, more elaborate stuff something like that uh, but I need to find those cabinets first because they are out of production right now. Um, so yeah, this is this is my idea right now to proceed with the display cabinets, but also buying the same display cabinet I already bought before from IKEA. I may show it actually, IKEA display cabinets. Um, why am I talking about it? I should just, you know, show it. Because I can, because I'm on the internet anyway. Uh, okay, which one do I have? I have this one right now. This one over here. We got it and we thought that it's enough, but it's not enough. Not nearly enough. <laughs> Maybe I should get this one, but my concern is that this one is pretty uh, like low. And this shelf over here wouldn't be that useful. I could maybe put some plants over there, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Um, so I would be using those two shelves anyway. Uh, so we decided to go for this one, which is a little bit higher. Um, IKEA display case. Am I, uh, will I be uh, successful in find finding the one uh, that uh, is in at Chroma out. Let me see. This is I honestly think that this is the best display cabinet you can get for miniatures, because the shelf is just uh, perfectly deep, like de deep perfectly enough um, to display something nicely uh, and something that is also of a smaller, small, smaller size. Um, hanging. Oh, this one over here. Hanging display cabinet from IKEA. This one or very similar. This is this is a very very cool. If you were if you will be able to uh, grab something like that, it's perfect. Um, and just deep enough to place your miniatures and you don't have to layer them like some having some in the front some in the back uh, I solved the, I, the this issue by getting acrylic um, acrylic uh, like steps so uh, my miniatures in the back are just higher than the ones in the front but it's not perfect honestly yeah so something like that but th this this kind of display cabinet would be the the most perfect one, one. Try wall mounted cabinets. Yeah, I, I have to find a one that is like clear glass and without any like thicker framing, uh, obscuring the contents uh, of the insides. Uh, okay, so we are after the break, right? Um, yeah, especially since uh, me and Pavel paint, right? I, I'm painting more <laughs> right now. And also most of the paintings I'm doing uh, are sold. So um, this is the issue, and Pavel is painting a little bit, but not but not that much. Uh, you can make fun of him uh, because uh, right now he's becoming the one miniature pro producer that is actually not painting uh, his miniatures. 
so we were joking at um, laughing at Piotrek from Nego Galaxy that he's doing his miniatures but he's not painting them and Piotrek started painting them and right now Pavel is in this uh, troublesome uh, position where he's doing miniatures but he's not painting them so uh, yeah, if you happen to see him somewhere on the competition, uh, you can uh, laugh uh, at him with me. Yeah, Pavel, I love you. Um, okay, so talking, going back to the background, right? Okay, let's let's try to be more, um, you know, more uh, meritoric. Uh, good good students, good teachers, stuff like that. Uh, knowledge is very important. Let's try to deepen our uh, approach to painting. Um, so basically, um, when we are doing backgrounds, there is uh, like a few issues we have uh, with the backgrounds, and uh, oh, sorry, uh, one of the issue, uh, one of the most important issues actually is the construction of everything. Uh, so um, we need to uh, blend the construction of the uh, of the whole miniature and the whole background uh, to go together well let me find the photoshop and i will try to do uh, take notes basically uh, okay so uh, the pointers, let's start with, okay, we'll paint in violet. Maybe not this violet, maybe this violet. Um, okay, so one construction. Or maybe I will use the typing mechanism over here. So first one, is the construction so when we get the get the miniature i want to paint and guys if you will have any any questions just post them in the chat i will try to follow everything um when we get the miniature uh we want to do with a background the optimal way to consider our work is to uh, when you get the miniature have in mind the the basically the background so when when you are in the middle of painting uh, and you didn't consider the background being there um, and then you decide to add the background, for example, when the miniature is actually finished, um, then we may struggle with the issue of, um, hey, hey, Kiera. Uh, so uh, if you have a almost finished miniature and you didn't include, include the idea of, um, of it uh, having the the background oh, let me find one more from me actually um, the issue is that uh, the background you will add later won't go well with the uh, with the issue of uh, like we you know with the issue but with the ambience of the of the miniature basically so uh, you will either have to um, later do some changes to immerse everything together uh, or like if you will not do it like if you will just leave it like that there is a chance that it will work or it may not work at all um well this one okay so i actually did a background i forgot about this one uh, and with this one mm, you have this example over here can you see it so I did uh, warmer just to uh, show you guys. Uh, hey, thank you for the follow. Uh, just to show you examples, uh, I actually also think that those pictures are pretty bad because it's everything is slightly too yellow. I think I need to try to go over uh, them again. So from this side over here, like from this direction, um, your uh, the the highlights and the ambience is warmer, and from over here from the direction of the uh, background uh, because I wanted to show that there is this like kind of night uh, very bright but night um, the highlights are in blue so this way I included the background into the painting and it kind of checks out even though it's not like uh, physically completely correct uh, like I didn't go for like 300% um, 300% realism, okay? Uh, but I did it like 
realistic enough so it will kind of work mm, so the best uh, way to approach doing background is to have the background in mind when you are when you start painting or when you decide to include the background in the composition uh, just be aware of the fact that you actually need to do some changes to make it work perfectly um, so this is the one uh, I don't know under point of the construction so uh, immersion uh, mini x back uh, mm -hmm. yeah yes yes background um, and I will maybe make it in 36 mm, another pointer is uh, something and I'm starting with the technical aspect okay um, hey hey Danny Dark Metal hey hey nice to see you here uh, that's why I didn't do one for my wood elf I decided late that it would look good but only if I had done the whole paint job with it in mind yeah exactly sometimes it's just to you know scrap the idea or finish the the bust and if you don't want to backtrack and do like corrections on this bust try a new project with a miniature that fits the fits the idea well and just uh, include the background from the beginning because uh, not every mi miniature needs to be maximized let's let's say say let's call it like that so some miniatures are okay to be like a smaller scale of the idea and then some other miniatures may be expansion of the idea you did before um the expanding the the idea on the new project is sometimes easier actually to do because you've already painted the miniature once um, recreating the idea will be easier for you because you already know how to do it and then adding the backdrop actually will be the only harder element you have to basically do with this project so sometimes it's good to you know minimize one painting to do um, maximization on the other painting Hey purple Alice, hey hey. Uh, I just thought a backdrop would be easier to paint nicely than the back of that model. Uh, yeah, and also like um, when you are doing a background, you don't always have to paint like the back of the model into a perfection. In particular, if the painting is not for a competition and you don't want to win uh, something particular with it, and instead of painting the back you can spend the time you know paint the back so it's like acceptably acceptable and then uh, use the rest of the hours on painting something on the background and the the, the profits of backgrounds let's call it like that is that uh, you have the whole of your work visible from the one one perspective so from the front uh, and with the miniature you sometimes have to turn it around or you don't uh, particularly like painting back like backs of the miniature and um, yes yeah, so the back is the back some people like to pa paint the backs some people don't uh, I don't know just adjust the process to your to your own personality let's call it like that so this is the 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 immersion of miniature and the background is the first pointer uh, for construction second pointer uh, is actually the construction so how to make it work uh, I, I decided to not show you guys the uh, let's call it like negative um, negative examples of uh, how something was done but for example when uh, you have a miniature like I can show you like slight example on my own work uh, like um, technically I wasn't uh, thinking about all of the aspects of the miniature because I was fixated more on placing the miniature in the middle of the background and I didn't think that actually when I glued the rod on the miniature that the rod will be visible on the background, right? So um, I kind of painted the miniature and I know that the background will probably be, th be there so um, I knew how to paint the background and I actually realized that I am so stupid uh, when the bust was already painted, the road was already, already glued in and I was halfway uh, paint in, in painting the background. So uh, I knew that the road will probably stay 
because I didn't want to do a heavy duty uh, works, you know, construction works on already painted uh, miniature because the chances of rubbing off the paint, for example, or um, kind of abusing it too much was too big for me. So I decided to keep the rod. And this is, you know, example for, for a bust. Um, I decided to keep the rod and actually painted uh, pink uh, to show the, you know, uh, the lighting uh, from the sunset. Um, op like optimally, my own uh, like opinion, uh, the best way to paint the rod is to paint it just black or I know some kind of dark, dark color that, that makes it, you know, uh, basically disappear. And I decided like uh, as a really like I don't know some kind of a lifeline for me to paint it pink because I didn't have any kind of like different solution. It worked in my opinion. It works pretty nicely, but it's suboptimal in in my opinion. I'm very happy that my friend actually decided to buy this one from me because it was very freeing to be able to discuss the construction issue with with, with this one. Uh, with him and just you know honestly not trying to uh, keep the straight face but i could be just honest tell him what i think ask him what he thinks and having like very open and very honest discussion about it uh, honestly i usually don't have this I, this problems with my projects because uh, i try to plan them as much as i can and this one was like um more uh, you know um i don't know uh, how's the name? Mm, uh, enthusiastic uh, project. So I just decided to jump into it. I knew that wor I kind of want to do this and that. And then I jumped into doing it and then some issues appeared in the middle. Um, so this is the, I, the example of, of how to work around some issues. And as you can see, the end effect is okay. It's all right. Right, but if you want to do like a magnus opus of your like to, to 2023, right, or 2024, uh, then try to plan ahead the construction and the, how to, to solve the issues. Like for example, this one, um, the perfect way, at least perfect, the more optimal way to go around this one, in my opinion, would be to mount the background separately. And this background, uh, like this miniature uh, is mounted on two rods. One rod, the rod from the miniature is thicker and the rod for the background is much thinner. So it's kind of, it hides um, behind the other rod on the, on the photography. Um, so since I already have two rods anyway, the perfect way would be to uh, mount the bust on the backdrop W uh, by using uh, like uh, thin but very firm metal rod and then mount the background on the base. That would make it like more subtle, more optimal uh, in my opinion, but also very abstract because um, right now the rod, uh, I don't know, it, it kind of works for this one because uh, this is very small academic bust. Uh, she doesn't even have her arm and it's kind of strangely just cut out in the middle. Um, and this is something I didn't consider either why, why starting the pro this project actually. Uh, usually I would prefer to have like a longer, um, longer sculpt, so it would be more natural. And this one is kind of abstract and I think that the rod works uh, fine for it because she already have like this black uh, painting in place of her arm. And if she was mounted on the uh, backdrop, as I mentioned before, uh, it would be basically a flying corpse of a moth. <laughs> and it would be not very realistic anyway. So I think that this does the purpose well. It works uh, fine. Um, but this is just the example of problem solving because I didn't plan everything ahead, basically. Um, for um, for for the full full length miniatures, uh, so for the miniatures that have uh, actually legs, let's call it like that. Uh, the issue may be that, for example, you, you want to sell the idea of very open space or something like that, 
and uh, instead of doing uh, a nice like this slopey uh, backdrop uh, that will melt the area of the sky and the ground and just adding some stuff over here to mask it uh, you will go for example for something like oopsie like that and then you will be left with this strange corner over here which sometimes is very visible and sometimes it's not very very visible also it shows um, if the miniature is casting a shadow on the background sometimes you can see like it's very you know broken over there um, you need to consider the shape of the background basically so this is the second point there um, shapes in the composition composition also i have very little space on my uh drive so i hope that this stream won't break <laughs> yeah um shapes in the composition so first shape uh, you need to consider is uh what kind of background you want to have so if you want it to be sloped or if you want it to be um to be uh prostokątne how is prostokątne in english um kind of squared um how tall the background is meant to be actually this is one of the most tricky uh elements so for example when you like what energy you want to show in this miniature this is very very important question so for example when you have like miniature of this size and this guy is meant to be uh, like very uh, i don't know very strong for example right then and you have like this uh, very strong very tall very big and you will do like this kind of backdrop it's it's kind of like i don't know it's very and then like leave a plinth like this this not plinth um uh, uh. okay and we have like this long long plinth it kind of doesn't work because the background is just too small right so just be aware that considering the length of the um like the tallness <laughs> i don't know uh of the background is sometimes uh, very important so make it a little bit bigger so the guy won't won't look like it's just you know overgrowing the composition um also depending on what you want to do with the miniature uh if the miniature is for example a very strong guy very straight he's meant to be a hero uh, then sometimes changing the shape of the background uh, can be useful so for example if it was a hero that is like standing like this over here um, then instead of doing just a square background you can do a background that is like that, basically. Uh, copying the, the, the shape or the composition of the sculpt already placed um, somewhere by someone else, basically. So um, the directions, the shapes uh, that are placed in the sculpture, it creates like this dynamic, right? The movement, the shapes, the... Uh, you can uh, i was i attended uh mike blank a workshop on motion show like few few a few years ago and it was about sculpting but in reality he was just uh, talking about like having this very rough shape uh this the skeleton of a um character so basically had the stick figure right and he was showing us how many like how many how much emotion you can show just by by placement of the limbs and the shapes stuff like that so uh, usually the sculpt has already some kind of shape some kind of emotion and also you you as a painter uh, want to uh, channel some emotions some uh, shapes so um for example if you were to uh, paint a um I know like a strong man do like this kind of of composition right uh, i did a workshop actually uh, i think that it may be on my instagram let me find it <clears throat> did i post the photos this is the question because usually i forget about it 
Uh, and this is the the idea for the it's so small I don't want it to be so small uh, so my idea was to create different shapes uh, for the composition and the girl was supposed to cast a shadow so my idea was to place her on the plinth and make it wider on the top to make the shadow for uh, make the place for the bigger shadow than the girl over here and uh, as you can see then i played around with the shapes actually so some of them are like more simple like this one over here and or this one i've painted actually and uh, this one for example is like broken in, with shards so you can really play play with it uh, you know and do something fun and just try to think what you want to show and then make place for it uh, with your on your background um, hmm. uh, for example like and over here to us uh, works actually are a good example of this slopey um, slopey backgrounds uh, I will talk about like particular examples of, of the painting uh, in a while uh, but you can see over here that um, ba his backgrounds are slopes and that allows uh, to uh, to hide the line of the um, of the like horizon basically uh, because in reality you cannot see the line like the in reality the world is not breaking in like uh, one straight angle uh, at some point uh, you can see like everything like you know disappearing in the in the um, the far farther away something g gets, it's less and less detailed and it's like kind of cloudy and you know. So two as backgrounds really shows show it well. Um, uh, Sebastian says, yeah, my Aurora, which is on a curved backdrop. Yeah, it's really, really, curved backdrop, backdrops really helps. Like over here, you have very abstract painting and um, I think like this is one of the most brilliant uh, ba uh, like um, dioramas for me. I will discuss it uh, later uh, more. But you can see that um, okay, this, there is not that much more. Okay, I didn't like it before. But uh, you can see that there is a little bit of like of stuff painted over there, and the uh, foreground actually starts building over here, and then it just goes forward. And this is a very nice way to mask. Mm, in the background uh, merging with the foreground. Uh, it's not always optimal because it really depends what you want to do with the piece. Uh, but have in mind that uh, like separating the background from the foreground is not always uh, you know the best way to go around it. Sometimes you can kind of mm, be more in a way clever or something like that. Uh, just have in mind that you have to. Uh, hide the 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 the, uh, the the place where the background and foreground merges so we had shapes in the composition we have the uh, background join with foreground yeah mm, this is another construction issue in my opinion so when you start a project, just try to consider it. Um, some of the projects I will see uh, if I have good examples over here. Is this a good example? Yeah, this is kind of a good example. So um, this is, I think that Kyle um, uploaded it like maybe today or yesterday, I think at least. Um, this is example of like a crazy shape, uh, like so basically a background being a background, but not totally background. <laughs> You know very crazy but you have the base over here and then you have like this 3d element uh, where the base meets the background so the three element 3d element is actually masking the the horizontal right or vertical vertical background going up and then over here we have this nice uh, foam hiding the connection between the background and the uh, the scab of the of the um, boat. Hey, Jan! <laughs> nice to see you here. Um, 
so yeah, this is this is the example of having like a 3D element um, hiding the fact that this is a background actually, and you can do it uh, like you know this is not a optimal example because there is no miniature standing over here, but you can have a miniature standing in the front. Then you have some uh, 3D elements um, behind the miniature, but they are kind of more flat or you know going into the background, and then the background is going up it may have the background may have some more 3d elements i think that pre sura actually did a, a very cool uh versions of that and um because he had like the series i i didn't think about it before but i i think that uh, it would be worth including over here so uh chris sura um, had like this uh Okay, I will show it. I wanted to show only the guys that I actually asked if I can show it, but this is just showing a, a example and a good example, so I hope that Chris won't mind. Um, so I will just do a quick jump into Chris's uh, series of dioramas he did years ago. So, um, for example, over here, like this is the simpler version. So there is a base uh, which is built up so it goes up like the stairs uh, going up, up, up. Then we have some of the 2D stuff visible and then we have the background. So the composition of the base is building up with the uh, going deeper and deeper. And then we have the background. So this is the way, in my opinion, to go uh, when you want to play with 3D effects. Uh, also this one over here, it just goes up, up, up. And actually it obscures the background a lot. Uh, but here you have painted um, branches and it works very, very well. So try to think about elements uh, building up the depth of the composition. Um, mm. And then uh, the one more thing about the shapes uh, for me. So for example, uh, like, I don't know exactly what place to find basically for this idea, because you had um, the example of 2S uh, works over here. And it's kind of the, the subject of the composition is kind of hovering in the in the background right and uh i've shown you oh this one is actually a very cool idea what i want to say um the shape of the background kind of shapes the whole composition and this is a very good idea like good uh, example uh but uh i also try to do that so i will maybe use my own you know piece uh, because I like to actually play play with it. So I wanted to make a sky with a moon and with some clouds. And I was thinking like, should I uh, like paint something like that, you know, and then have this the moon over here and some clouds over here and she would be sitting over here with the wings on the leaf and it would be like traditionally in the, in the square. But I decided that the shape of her leaf and the size of everything is so cool and so nice that I could do the moon as the frame for the background. And I don't want to say that it's uh, like perfect, you know, version. In my opinion, it's fun to play with this, this kind of concept. So the background to be the frame for uh, for the miniature actually and i think that not everyone you know and i am the author of this so i know the shapes i know how it should read and maybe i see more than some people but um some people actually tell me i can see the moon basically right away because i've painted it i know that it's there some people tell me that they find the moon later and it's not that obvious for me it's totally fine i like this you know kind of being sneaky uh, about the shapes but if you cared more about the moon like being somewhere, so for example, uh, in this moth, uh, I did the moon as a sh separate shape uh, because I wanted it to be there as a part of the composition, like show that it's um, casting the light. Mm, I made it smaller and I placed it, you know, more in a more, more visible place. Uh, if you don't care about some shape and you want it to be like basically just just a frame, uh, don't be afraid to sh to hide it in a way. 
Uh, also, I was very proud with this one that I just cut out the shape of the clouds and like try to make it, you know, more flowy in a way. Um, I did something similar with Poudnica, so uh, I she has very wavy hair. Um, so I decided to create like this wave of this um, field to replicate the, the, the shapes that were already in the miniature. So, you know, you have the, you are creating your own composition, but painting the miniature is like a collaborator with the sculptor, sculptor in my opinion, because you are remixing his idea. So you can take the creativity someone already put, put in the piece and you can uh, repeat it or kind of shape it uh, in your own way and work with it. Um, it may be very obvious. So for example, if there is uh, a crescent, I could do a moon again and, uh, you know, double the the crescent shape of the cycle cycle with the moon and that could work perfectly but um, i decided to do a wave and it's not very obvious but it kind of works it flows uh, it, the, the composition works mm, sebastian i don't think i will make the change but now i am thinking it would have worked cool to do a much more pared down version with my uh, witch lady with just the aurora in the backdrop and her sitting on like one uh, tree top uh, could be cool with execution less busy than my current one but i like uh, mine still um basically i'm uh, i hope that i got the works right like the one uh, lady from mind work uh, like the witch sitting on the broom right so your idea is very very good but you decided to build on the more realism um it's on my discord and i talked about it on my previous streams guys so um you went into kind of more complicated execution in my opinion because you started building the realistic uh, diorama but then you, at some point you need to go into the surre surrealistic like uh, execution to frame it in a nice way uh, with this kind of complicated concept so um, I don't think that uh, it's like the your effect is, is uh, not bad it's okay and it's cool um, but I think that's uh, with more surrealistic like surrealistic like more um, general ideas and not literal solutions let's call it like that sometimes it's easier easier to show the idea and just to have like the cleaner I don't know, execution in a way you know I don't want to say that it's better but it's and it's not totally easier but it's just a different way you can you can go uh, I prefer I prefer to go like this way uh, because then um, I know maybe it's a little bit simpler but also it's easier to understand for the viewer in my opinion um, so yeah uh, so the shape of the background I will I will just add it over here shape of the background okay got it um, so those are the uh, let's call it like conceptual issues uh, I like uh, when people um, consider when they start their projects uh, I personally like to think about it uh, first because then when you actually go into painting and then gluing everything and then you are half done but not everything is working together it gets messy and it's harder to finish the project actually and so for more complicated ideas uh, I would advise to try to plan it out and try to con consider all of the options and be kind of more mindful of what you want to achieve because then you will know if it's going all right or if it's not going all right yeah um so yeah uh those are the construction issues issues and when you have your diorama constructed then you go into painting so uh now i will do this the, the, the second point and now we will go into discussing the um the painting aspect painting no, good okay so i want to talk a lot about like the technical um 
approaches. I prefer mine uh, backgrounds, and this is, you know, my opinion. It's just my opinion. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, I can have my opinion, but then you may have yours, and it's totally okay. It works. Uh, I will just show you how I do, how I go around with painting my backdrops. And this is something I struggled a lot to understand, actually. So how to paint my backdrop, actually? Should I use airbrush? Because, you know, backdrop is very big, very flat, and actually acrylic paints are very, very hard to blend. Um, blending on a 3D miniature works well, but uh, when you have very big flat surface and you want to paint something very um very like hazy for example it's very hard to get the effect done uh with acrylic paint on the fl flat surface of course you can go different ways uh, i specialize in painting uh with acrylics so uh, this is the acrylic approach in my opinion uh like uh acrylic approach like in my experience let's call it like that um Maybe it uh, maybe doing like a nice blended uh, flat painting uh, w would work very nicely with oils. You know, if you want to try out oils, it's totally okay. They are fine. <laughs> Go for them. I prefer acrylic approach, and um, my approach is that I like to paint everything with the brush. Uh, so uh, in the uh, past, I was actually painting my backdrops with using the, br the brush. This one over here, for example, I decided to use uh, to leave a little bit more texture. So you can see over here that you can see the brush strokes, stuff like that. Um, and with this one in particular, my approach was to mimic uh, one of the Polish painters uh, Paint, what is it? Homoyski, I think. Uh, uh, give me a second. Um, oh yeah, so we have this very famous Polish painter. Like, at least it's very epic uh, for Polish people. Uh, Józef Homoyski. Oh my God, so much red. Uh, this is this is the guy basically. Uh, this is how you write his name. Józef Homoyski is how you read it. Um, and he was a painter, of course, like those paintings are very, very small over here. Uh, he was specializing in painting uh, Polish nature, um, stuff like that. And I really wanted to mimic his paintings uh, with my backdrops, uh, in particular for this one. That's why I decided to keep a little bit more of the texture uh, visible. and. For example, that's why those clouds look like that. They are. I didn't blend them uh, like more than maybe I should, and, and you can see brush strokes in the in the on, on the sky. Um, this was my conscious artistic decision, and I didn't want to blend everything, um, and it worked for me for this project. But uh, I know in general. When you go for painting uh, backdrops, in my opinion, the best way and the safest way you can go around with the painting is to keep the amount of texture on the miniature the same as on the background. So if you have a very smooth painting, so for example, for example, I did this moth over here, and uh, you can see that the background is very, very smooth. It was actually, uh, I started painting it with my brush and uh, I will be posting the process, like most of the process on my Patreon because uh, I will post the sketching etap and then like the sketching steps. And then I didn't film it because I just forgot. Uh, I used a bit of airbrush to just blend out everything. Um, yeah, but you can see like a little bit of brush strokes over here and uh, you know over here stuff like that. So I basically sketched it uh, with a brush and then I went over some of the elements to just blend it slightly more uh, because um, you know and you can still see some blends uh, in the background. Uh, blends, I mean like the blends by brush, uh, but not everything. I kept more detail in the clouds because I like it a lot. Like most of the areas over here were were pretty much blended, but it wasn't perfect, so I decided to go more with the airbrush to 
make it more smooth because for this particular painting I decided that I really want to keep with the uh, highly blended um, character and uh, matching background because I just wanted the background to complement the miniature. I didn't want to do anything else with it. Uh, with this one, uh, it was blended with the brush uh, and you can see a little bit more of the texture in the clouds over here. Uh, I wanted them to be very like painterly uh, because I like this effect. Um, and you can see like more detail in the falling sky, stars, stuff like that. They are blended, but you can see that the blend uh, finish is by brush because it's not like this hazy airbrush. It's more like this, you know, pigment moved by, by a brush. Um, if you prefer completely like, and over here we can see that it's kind of like this smooshy, mushy, uh, uh, blended, uh, blended by a brush uh, finish and not like this perfectly hazy blend out uh, by the airbrush. Um, honestly, you can do a brush, you can do a, an airbrush, you can do whatever you want. I can. I want to show you, uh, thank you for the follow, uh, I want to show you how you can actually go into painting uh, your compositions with different approaches. Uh, also, hello Siri right now. Um, my approach is, uh, and I understood it like this year actually, <laughs> my approach is right now to, when I'm painting a miniature to a higher finish, uh, I mean higher finish with the blending, so I'm blending it a lot, I will try to stick to more blended uh, backgrounds and uh, I would actually try to follow most of like 2S approach. Um, to make a very general, oops, to make a very general background that complements the miniature uh, very nicely. And if I will paint a little bit with more texture, I will keep the backgrounds more textured, basically. Uh, so I want everything to complement, and this way, uh, background with ma will match uh, foreground. Sorry, guys, one second. I needed to make it easier for my cat to jump. Um, by keeping the painting consistent, uh, I will make it like work better, basically. Uh, if you have like an alternative idea, like I did, I have a bit with Poudnica, but this is very safe <laughs> alternative idea. The amount of detail in the background is not that big, actually. Uh, but this is like, you know, the safest way of doing an alternative idea. Um, you can try to make it work. Uh, for some people, it will work like perfectly. For some, maybe not. Uh, it really depends. The most important, actually, stuff is that you need to be happy with the outcome. Um, and you know, just do uh, you do you basically. Uh, also with the stream, I don't want to tell you what is right and what is wrong. Uh, I want to show you how to maybe. Uh, achieve some, you know, effects uh, because analyzing the work, uh, you know, selling the effect in a way when you're painting, uh, you know, having some kind of insight usually helps. Uh, this is just that. Mm. So the first pointer for painting, in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, right? so I don't have to be right with everything, um, is to uh, match the textures and finish. Um, and you know, if you want to go safe, go with this, uh, it will work. Blended miniature means blended background. Yeah. Um, also with the um, amount of blends, uh, what is uh, what is it about? You are placing a detail in your painting. So when you uh, and usually blending means that you are losing some of the detail. And uh, I treat um, brush strokes as a detail as well because this is something you can see. You notice it. Uh, the direction of brush strokes, like, you know, I'm not that much into the brush stroke um, enthusiasm, uh, not as much as some other painters are, and that's totally okay, but I just don't get it that much. 
let's call it like that. Uh, but the reality is that uh, grass strokes can show some emotion, they so show some expression. And if you want to show more expression uh, by your brush strokes, uh, you can, you know, keep them. But if you want to have like a very uh, smooth, very like hazy uh, painting, try to lose the brush strokes in a way. Uh, or in general, just sit, sit down, think what you want to uh, like uh, achieve and try to do it with your painting. This is all. And uh, yeah, um, sorry, um, I really like how uh, JV Garcia uh, does their backdrops, it's much more to the painting behind the model and not like construction and interesting composition. Can you uh, link, the, uh, link an example in the chat? Um, but to me, it's like a character coming out of fantasy book. Yeah, you need to, uh, now you have to link, a, link an example in the chat, sorry Sebastian. <laughs> you, you, I'm, I'm giving you um, some t uh, quests to go. Okay, so for the painting, I kind of lost my track of time right now. Okay, let's open the example. Mm. Oh, this one. Damn it, I want a bigger picture. And it's not getting bigger. Okay, it got bigger. Um, it's cool, but for... Yeah, I like it a lot. It's very very nice uh, yeah this is a very good example of what you want to do uh, but like um, I think that the uh, leaf uh, that the petals really nicely show the direction of the you know where you should actually look so it's very well done it's a very cool uh, example this one is very very good I, I think like you have this uh, tree uh, over here and then the repetition repetition of shapes and um, of shapes and colors um, and elements in general uh, in the background and uh, like they layer like brighter and brighter to show that they are getting lost in the background basically and not too much detail over here so it doesn't um, it just uh, you know it, it embraces the focal point uh, in the middle actually yeah, very cool example. And uh, with the detail, actually. Mm, the stuff with the, with the, the with detailing is uh, that um, actually the amount of detail you paint in the background uh, needs to be considered when it uh, goes into your composition. So if you have very uh, simple miniature uh, let's move it over here. If you have very simple miniature that is very uh, not very detailed uh, stuff like that and then so you will have one very simple shape in the front and then and it won't have a lot of detail it won't have a lot of colors for example and then you will put like a lot of detailing all around um, it make it may take attention away or if you will put the same amount of uh, detail in the background as you will put in your foreground, the miniature may get lost in, in your background, basically. So um, you need to be very considerate uh, how much detail you actually want to put in the background and how much detail you are putting in the uh, foreground, which is usually miniature. Um, how to solve this? Uh, for example, you can actually uh, keep the background detailed uh, but you can add a stronger color into the miniature and then have it something like that. And it may have a lot of detail, but it will be jumping out from the background anyway and it will be very easy to notice. Uh, you can do a negative uh, where you have uh, a miniature that is not busy at all and is very easy to read and understand the shapes. So something like that. Mm and to have the detailed background as the detail actually but be mindful that um, for example making the background a little bit darker than the uh, character could be a good idea so for example and i will do like a crazy crazy shape okay
So something like this. Keep the as much detail as you want in the background, but just make the character much brighter and uh, less detail in the front. Just be mindful that detail may take away the um, the the attention from the miniature. And for example, over here, when you can see like the amount of detail, they are just dots and li lines, right? But your eyes go more to the detail around the character. And then uh, when you make it darker, the character actually shines more. And you know, this is just silly scribble uh, actually, but uh, I just hope that it uh, represents the, you know, the differences I'm talking about. So be aware, you can go opposite. So for example, um, have not that much detail in the back. Oops, uh, okay, I over, overdid it. Mm, have not that much detail in the back and just keep the detail inside the detail in the miniature and this way uh, you know this is basically the easiest way how to do it uh, not that much detailed background and a lot of detail in the miniature the I will like very naturally go with to the character and background is basically a background. And, uh, you know, uh, doing this like mindful distribution of detail, layering it with the nice shape uh, that complements the composition and complements the character. Uh, it the, Those are like those layers that are, are building the successful execution. And you can achieve it in many different ways. Uh, just be uh, be aware of of the paths you can you can take and how to achieve something. Mm. Match the textures and finish uh, painting. Uh, consider the detail. Okay, um, next point, uh, actually doing the, um, I don't know, the, uh, let's call it like, uh, the, the flow of the, uh, of the piece, right? So you can see that this, this is basically a flat piece of paper. <laughs> right painting i think that it was painted painted with watercolors just it's very very simple uh but it just makes the work uh like make makes the job done right because you have this more uh interesting shape over here also it's in red it's everything is saturated over here but it actually works um because this is the saturated red like kind of brown red and the workers are much more intense. So um, it like the background in theory like uh, takes over the composition, but we can see all the time a little bit of orange somewhere in the corner. corner and so our uh, gaze jumps back into the characters that are the most important uh, in the composition. So uh, be you know, mindful of the colors. Um, hey, hey, just Siemka. Be mindful of the colors and not everything needs to be, um, you know, need to be very, very bright or very, very red, but try to color code the elements. So the most important elements, let them be warmer, brighter, um, you know, I know, yellow, orange, something that will bring the attention and then everything else, let it be a actual background. So don't try to, and this is, you know, the usual, um, the usual composition, uh, the usual composition uh, approach, color code the in, in, in interesting uh, objects. Um, so for example, if you will put a, a red, red moon over here in magenta it's overtaking the composition because you are watching looking over here all the time and the character doesn't matter but you could for example 
okay we have ad break so uh, I will maybe have a quick break yeah anyone uh, subscribing me do you have any questions guys mm. is it okay no questions okay so I'm going to feed my cat uh, give me like two minutes uh, I will try to be on time <laughs> it's good so far I hope so uh, I'm just gonna um, yeah feed Siri because she didn't eat uh, that much today be right back <laughs> Early, ha, 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 on time. Uh, okay, so we have one minute together. What can I say? Mm, yeah, if you will have any any questions, for uh, just uh, feel free to ask because you know uh, I just try to channel my thoughts, and maybe I will turn it into a article on my pa Patreon or something like that because you know discussing something actually like thinking about this stream really made me like forced me to uh, tidy up <laughs> you know and kind of organize my thoughts so right now maybe I could just write it down in a comp comprehensive way uh, yeah but uh, this is you know my stream of thoughts and maybe it's not very perfect so if you have any questions or something you would like to hear more uh, just let me know yeah mm. Outbreak is almost over. Um, okay, guys, uh, got you back. Uh, so I was talking about the uh, colors. So uh, instead of putting a, and that's me when someone asks me to explain OSL or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not that easy, right? <laughs> So I was talking about the red moon, uh, so uh, before we had, okay, I removed it already. So instead of uh, placing a red moon, you can place, for example, a white moon and then put something intense on the character, actually, to bring attention to it. Or you can place a red moon, uh, but let it be not that red. Um, so, for example, if we had this kind of pink on the character somewhere, let's call it like maybe over here and here, and uh, we can take the pink that is on the character but make it less intense and make the moon over here. And this way uh, we can show the relation between the character and the moon. Um, the moon is important and maybe this way you can show that the moon influences the powers of this guy or I don't know, uh, this guy just likes to go on a walk in the moon and he always wears pink, right? something like that. Um, and by rep repetition of the color, you can, uh, of the color of colors, uh, you can actually uh, like create some kind of storytelling uh, you can show relations uh, between elements in the composition so try to color code them and be mindful of the colors you are putting all around the miniature um, also sometimes you can go negative uh, with the strong colors so you could put um basically <laughs> sorry i have a uh, flying fly flying around um 
Bardzo na scenie. We can have a very strong color around the character. Pomnóż? Normalne? No, pomnóż. It has to be like that. It doesn't work like I wanted to work. <laughs> okay, but something like that. Mm, Dupri, Kate. Okay, so we have we can have a very very strong pink, and we can have a bright character, and the strong background is actually uh, serving as a background for the brighter character, uh, because just the light. Uh, light colors uh, are making it jump out of the character of the background, right? So you can do it in many different ways, and also by repeating, for example, white. Um, just paint a white moon again, and see it. It works, but just in a different way. So don't be uh, afraid of. Um, um, don't be afraid of using stronger border colors on your background, but try to be aware how they work. Um, and for example, if you will do a, a character that has, uh, if you will do a pink background and then you will do a lot of pinks on the character, the pink will serve uh, as a background color in general. So uh, usually when you would have, for example, a bust, um, and uh, if you would put a calmer, calmer colors on the top of uh, of its head, so for example, I know blonde hair, something very very fair, very natural, and put her in white. Uh, so her having very natural colors all around, stuff like that. And then you would take this very aggressive pink and put the put it like somewhere on over here. As a composition, the pink is overtaking the whole composition because uh, we are uh, we are looking at the pink on the bottom of the miniature, and usually the the dress or something like that doesn't matter that much. Sh so, not important element is stealing the attention from the important element. For example, in the bust, which is a portrait, and for the portrait, the most important element is the face. But if you would uh, take this pink dress and put it over here on the pink background. Uh, the very fair, very bright um, upper area of the character would, would be more important then. So just be mindful of the values and the colors you are putting in your composition. Uh, there is no right and wrong, basically. Just try to be aware of how to work around the, the ideas and the concepts. Uh, because everything can be uh, done, let's call it, uh, in an effective way. And actually, it's, it doesn't matter if you are doing something wrong or right. It matters if you are uh, achieving the stuff you wanted to achieve. So that's why having the plan is actually very good. Because when you know what you want to paint, you know if you are uh, achieving the effect or if you are not achieving it. Yeah. Um, so this is it. And uh, okay, so I went over matching the textures and finish and considering the detail on the background and the figure and then consider the colors actually. Okay, let me maybe turn this off. Uh, um, I will just write over here color coding. Um, uh, color coding 